The next speaker on our panel is Professor Michael A. Helfand of Pepperdine University School of Law, whose contribution is entitled, Who Arbitrates? Arbitration Qualification Clauses in Religious Arbitration Agreements. Good morning for me, good afternoon for you. Religious arbitration is, at its core, defined by two related features. One, decisions are rendered by religious authorities who, two, adjudicate disputes in accordance with religious laws, rules, and values. Religious arbitration agreements typically reflect these two elements by including both arbitration clauses and choice of law provisions. But like parties to arbitration more generally, parties to religious arbitration sometimes also incorporate arbitrator qualification clauses. Such clauses are relatively common in arbitration agreements and allow parties to choose the kind of decision makers they believe are best suited to resolve the dispute. They can require arbitrators to be judges or CPAs or anything else the parties think is important. In this way, they stand at the very center of arbitration agreements. As a general matter, such clauses can generate legal challenges, for example, when they unlawfully tilt the scales of the arbitration in favor of one of the parties. Thus, an employer might draft an arbitration agreement to be signed by employees where any disputes would be resolved by individuals who are actually supervisor within the employer's company. In the extreme, such clauses can render the contract unenforceable because it fails to satisfy the basic requirements of arbitral neutrality or because it renders the agreement unconscionable. But arbitrator qualification clauses in religious arbitration agreements present an added wrinkle. In religious arbitration agreements, arbitrator qualification clauses typically incorporate religious criteria. Therefore, determining whether or not an arbitrator qualification clause might trigger partiality or unconscionability concerns typically requires determining the theological meaning and impact of these criteria. The problem is that the establishment clause is understood to prohibit judicial inter interpretation of these sorts of religious questions. This core conundrum has been front and center in recent controversies over the Church of Scientology's use of religious arbitration agreements. See how, consider the case of Garcia v. Church of Scientology. Maria and Luis Garcia, former Church of Scientology members, filed suit in federal district court against the Church of Scientology, alleging fraud and breach of contract claims. When the Church of Scientology filed a motion to compel arbitration of the dispute, the Garcias claimed that the arbitration agreement was unconscionable, in part, because of the arbitrator selection clause, which required that all the arbitrators, quote, be Scientologists in good standing with the mother church. The Garcias argued that they had been declared suppressive and Scientologists in good standing are prohibited from communicating with suppressive individuals. Both the district court and the 11th circuit rejected the claim. Resolving such questions would require a judicial assessment of Scientology theology. How else could a court determine the impact of an individual being declared a suppressive? But such an inquiry, the court said, was prohibited by the First Amendment, and so the court enforced the arbitration agreement. What should happen in such cases? One possibility is instead of contesting the underlying fairness of such provisions, parties might instead argue that enforcing might argue that enforcing the provision itself constitutes a violation of the establishment clause. See how consider the example of in matter uh, in matter of Esther Ismailov, where a New York surrogate court refused to enforce an arbitrator qualification clause that requires selection of, quote, three persons of the Orthodox Jewish faith. The court concluded that enforcing such a provision would violate the Establishment Clause because it would require judicial determination of a religious question, whether the arbitrators were Orthodox. One can imagine making a similar argument regarding the Church of Scientology arbitration agreement. Determining whether someone is a Scientologist in good standing with the Mother Church might very well require delving into religious questions. Therefore, if the parties disagreed over who qualified as a Scientologist in good standing with the mother church, a court ought to refuse enforcing the provision and in turn, strike it down from the arbitration agreement. Courts are yet to go down this, path, this alternative path, but if we are both to ensure the enforcement of religious arbitration agreements and to police those agreements for partiality, that may need to change and change soon. Thank you. <laughs> 